the first thing that comes to mind when I think about the genesis of the iX20, it, it actually started in parallel or before we even released the iX12. But I remember that the sprint and the effort that took to bring the iX12 to market was so difficult. And some of the early feedback, we're all on Facebook, we're all on the forums, we're looking, seeing what customers, how they respond. And the very first series of questions were, where's the 20 channel? <laughs> and I remember thinking immediately like, well, it'll be here, but we're on it. My name is Jeremy Pesson. I'm Andy Coons. Danny Snyder. Robert Lemon. Ali Machinchi. David McAllister. I'm a uh, electrical engineer. Staff engineer dash software. Product manager for the Spectrum Air brand. Senior software engineer, uh, lead software developer for the IX series radios. Bates testing team. I'm the engineering manager. And I designed hardware, uh, some of the circuit boards for the IX20. And I write all the user interface and channel processing code that goes on in the DX radios, both air and surface. Android system architecture integration on all that. Helped some with the channel processor software development as well. For me, this was uh, my project from the, from the get-go, starting out probably just a little over two years ago, so it's been uh, a long time coming. <laughs> well, we started out with the DX8 over 10 years ago um, with what we now call our Generation 1 uh, radios. After about two years, it was obvious that we needed to grow beyond those. Uh, we went to what we called the G2 radios, starting with the DX10T and then the DX18 and the DX9 and all those that have come since. IX12 was the last of the new Gen 2 radios that we've developed. When we went with the IX20, we created this Generation 3 channel processor. Things that we've added to it make it so that it's definitely light years ahead. We, you know, we took 10 years of learning and applied them and built them into this radio. We used a lot of that same software, but we put it on a completely new, faster microprocessor with more memory, more modern platform. The iX family, as it's becoming now, really the 20 was developed from the 12. You know, the 12 was the basis, it gave us the start, but ultimately the iX20 was a ground up development. We, we started from basically a blank sheet of paper. There's literally uh, no PCB hardware that's really the same between the two. Obviously the 20 had to be better in all the ways. More channels, more speed, more display, more power, and we took that from outside in. Um, the firmware is different between the two. One of the things that uh, I had a big hand in was uh, we started with the iX12 code base and we wanted to be able to leverage as much of that software as we could. And so there's an effort there to abstract out some of the hardware specific code and make it uh, so we could share a lot of the code between the iX12 and the iX20 code base. So there's a lot of uh, effort that was done there to make that possible. So now the, the two code bases actually share quite a bit. The entire system uh, operationally is different. They re-engineered all new um, processors, modules, everything the best that we could build. I helped design some of the ways different parts of the system work together on a, an electrical level. Also designed uh, several of the circuit boards, figured out what components would have to be on them and uh, routed traces and things like that. We partner with Aircraft Studio Design. Aircraft Studio Design in Italy for a very slick look. Mirko and Pietro at Aircraft Studio Design, they were highly involved. They actually did the concepts of the body of the transmitter and then turned that into the CAD that we then took to our uh, partners over in China and uh, tooled up and everything. had a, a number of them, as you can imagine, on a, a complex system of this nature, but uh, one of the largest would have been our Android system development. It's quite a complicated system, and the Android system has to interface with our boards and our firmware, and if that's not perfect, the system just doesn't work. Because so many different parts of this had to work together, just on the side of, of, of uh, kind of system integration and making everything would work together was, was a big project both for mechanical stuff, electrical stuff, and software stuff. So that was actually the longest part of the development of the entire project. That is actually what started a little over two years ago now. Different things had to talk to each other um, as, as capabilities needed to change or as the product design um, 
required adjustments. All the different parts of it had to be kept in sync and up to date to make sure the interfaces between them all would still be correct and function the way it's supposed to. That was the most challenging aspect of the entire project, without a doubt. Sounds like a nightmare to me. <laughs> uh, you know, it was worth the effort. Some of the stuff that's more hidden is the channel processor, the, uh, the microcontroller that we're using for that is more powerful than any of the microcontrollers we've used for that purpose in the past and it can do a lot more. It's just so quick, it's so intuitive, you know, it's all on that screen, I can just go bup, 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 set a template up and have a model set up in half the time that it used to take me on the DX18. And like capacitive touch switches, that was one thing that we were all had talked about for years and never done. So you can have it tell you what the switch is, what the switch does, what position it's in without actually moving the switch. My model setups, which I do a lot of, you know, obviously with work and it being my hobby, I fly a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, I've already got like 30, 40 models on this radio. I've already done 200 hours um, on this particular unit, ranging from little foam models up to my big, big turbine jet. And the more I delve into it, the more I'm learning some of its features and its, its positive point. Uh, I'm now flying my whole fleet on this one radio work on the non-Android portion and I'm still learning a lot from customers of hosting online about things that they've seen in your other videos and um, online and manual and stuff like that that I didn't I didn't realize I had a camera until the other day. New SOM and its technology looks bigger, better, faster in all the ways and I think that that's going to really change people's experience of an IX radio. <laughs> I see the definite application for the camera, um, but it's you know something that was totally new to me. There's so many new things like that. On the fly trimming, we call it OTF trims. That one's really cool. You can uh, adjust on the fly whenever you're flying your model. You know, program mixes and and other values. The the platform is so much more intuitive and quicker to use, and it just makes that experience of programming an airplane better. Uh, I relied on reviews of several different kinds from uh, the product development team, from the software team, and from other hardware designers to make sure that when this thing came together it would really blow people away. Our critics were one of the biggest assets that we've had in this. People saying it doesn't do what my radio does, or I really wish it could do this new feature, or some, sometimes just in passing somebody would say, hey, you know, it'd be neat if it did X. And I've been keeping a log of those things. We have a database that we keep track of all this stuff in, and X got included for an awful lot of those Xs that people came out with. I'm just excited, like I said, with the, there's a lot of new you know, features that we have with the bigger touch screen and the you know, better processor. I think you know, we've listened to a lot of requests and issues that people have had with the 12, and it, I think we've done a lot to address a lot of those. So many, so many cool use cases that we can't even think of, and I'm really excited to see what customers do with it and hopefully uh, we, we get to, to learn from our customers what, what needs to be done beyond the 20. The, the 20, uh, though it's actually been one of my longest projects, I'd say it's a very rewarding one just from the, the standpoint of, you know, it, I think it's a great system. It uh, has a lot of high-end features and a lot of capabilities and we're just starting on uh, getting a lot of those to the market. We've got more, more coming, so. Stay tuned. <laughs>